Okay, I'd like us to see how to solve some simple problems where an object is pushed or pulled with a force at an angle. Last time we saw pushing a block, solving it using Newton's second law to determine the acceleration. Uh, this time, instead of simply pushing the box, let's have the box pulled with some force acting at an angle. And like last time, we can say that the applied force is 100 newtons, and the block will slide along the ground. For now, let's put wheels on it. We'll ignore friction. Well, this, uh, this angle, uh, we have to make up an angle here. Let's say that this applied force is happening at an angle of theta, where theta is 30 degrees above the horizontal. So not all 100 newtons will cause the block to move forward. Only some part of that is going to impact the horizontal motion of the block, and some part of that is going to act vertically. So the key here is to break this applied force into two parts. If the applied force is Fa, some part of that is horizontal, I can call that FAX, and some part of that force is vertical, I can call that FAY. And if this is the angle that I'm pulling it at, I see that I have a right triangle, and now I'm engaging in some trig. So if you would remember your trig, your Sokotoa identities, you remember that the opposite side is equal to the sine of the angle. Let me fix that. The, uh, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is based on the sine of the angle. So sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. But opposite, in this case, is FAY. And the hypotenuse is FA. So I can say, solving this equation for FAY, that FAY is simply the applied force times the sine of the angle. Well, similarly, we can derive an expression for FAX. This is the adjacent side. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So FAX is simply the applied force times cosine of the angle. So even if you don't know trig, or you didn't learn it very well, if you want to know the horizontal component of this force, all you need to know is that you take the applied force, the hypotenuse, multiply it by the cosine of the angle. Now in physics class we will typically use angle measurements in degrees, so if you're doing a cosine or a sine, make sure your calculator is set to degrees. Alright, so in this problem, we have FAY sine of 30. You might remember from math that the sine of 30 is 0.5. So if I have 100 times 0.5, the vertical component of this force is 50 newtons. The cosine of 30 is 0.866. I'm going to call it 0.87. So 100 times cosine of 30 gives me about 87 newtons. What does that tell me? That tells me that if I pull with a force of 100 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees, that will be a vertical force of 50 newtons and a horizontal force of 87 newtons. Now I can go ahead and solve my problem. I say Newton's second law, sigma f the sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration. However, I see now that I have different forces happening in X and in Y. If I come back up here, I see that I have FAX here, but I still have the force of gravity acting down, I have a normal force acting up, and I have an additional FAY acting up. So, in this problem, I'm probably only needing to use forces in the x direction. 
but just for good practice, I'm going to apply Newton's second law in the x direction and separately in the y direction. Things in the y direction don't see things in the x direction. So the extra x forces are separate from y forces. So the sum of the forces in the x direction, in this problem I did not include friction. We'll do that next time. So there's only one force in the x direction. That force is FAx. And that will equal mass times acceleration. I've solved for FAx. That's 87 newtons. The mass of Bernie the block is still 10. So my acceleration will be 8.7 meters per second squared. And if that's all they were asking, then I'm done with the problem. If I needed to figure out what the normal force is, or something else in the problem, I might need the vertical side of things. So I'll write this out as well. Forces that are up are called are positive. So I'm going to say that the normal force is up, and FAY is up. Those are these two forces acting upward on this block. And there's a down force, gravity. I'm going to call gravity negative because it's down. That's my sum of forces in the y direction. Now, mass times acceleration. The block is not accelerating up or down, so I can say this is zero. Now, if I needed to find the normal force, notice in this problem the normal force is not equal to the force of gravity because there is an additional vertical component of the applied force. If I needed to find the normal force, let's go ahead and do that. Normal force is unknown. We know FAY is 50. Force of gravity. What is the force of gravity? Well, remember, force of gravity depends on mass and G. So if the mass is 10, I'm going to round G, even though it's 9.8, I'm going to call it about 10. So the force of gravity on this object is about 100 newtons. So minus 100 equals zero. I can see that the normal force has to be 50 newtons. I don't know what that is. 50 newtons of normal force in this situation. Now, if I was pushing down on this block, instead of somebody pulling, if there was a downward component, the normal force would have to be larger than the force of gravity. In this case, the normal force is much less because there's an upward component of the applied force.